this is Dr. Joanne Manson, Professor of Medicine at Harvard Medical School and Brigham and Women's Hospital. I'd like to talk with you about our recent report in JAMA on the Women's Health Initiative, the WHI randomized trials, and their clinical messages. The WHI is the largest study of women's health ever done in the United States. And previous WHI clinical trial reports focused on the individual WHI trials, hormone therapy, calcium vitamin D, low fat diet modification, without a specific focus on translation to clinical practice. This recent report summarizes the key findings uh, from all of the WHI randomized trials from the intervention phase as well as long-term follow-up with a special focus on implications for clinical practice. So starting with the hormone therapy trial, the WHI findings show that women in early menopause, which women below the age of 60 had lower risks, absolute risks of adverse events, and a generally more favorable benefit risk profile than the women in later menopause, um, the women in their uh, 60s and 70s. And um, overall, the WHI investigators state clearly that the WHI findings are consistent with the use of hormone therapy for the treatment of moderate to severe or bothersome hot flashes, night sweats, other menopausal symptoms among women in early menopause uh, without contraindications. And this is an FDA approved indication for hormone therapy. And the WHI findings really should never be used as a reason to deny the use of hormone therapy to women who are presenting with bothersome vasomotor or other menopausal symptoms and seeking uh, treatment, especially when they are in early menopause and free of contraindications. Now, on the other hand, uh, the WHI findings do not support the use of hormone therapy for the express purpose of trying to prevent heart disease, stroke, dementia, or other chronic diseases. And that was the main purpose of the WHI trials to evaluate menopausal hormone therapy for the, the benefit risk profile when used for prevention of chronic diseases. The bar is set very high for medications being used for prevention purposes, and the risks need to be extremely low. But again, um, the findings are very consistent with their FDA-approved indications for treatment of menopausal symptoms among women in early menopause. Now, for uh, calcium and vitamin D, most previous trials had been done in women at increased risk of osteoporosis, low, having low bone mineral density, uh, diagnosed osteoporosis, or prior fracture. And the WHI was the first randomized trial of calcium vitamin D for fracture prevention among women at typical risk of fracture. And the findings do not support the routine or universal use of calcium vitamin D supplementation for prevention of fracture in all postmenopausal women. However, the findings do support um, the use of supplementation for women who have um, a gap, nutritional gaps in intake um, and are not meeting the, the national guidelines for calcium and vitamin D um, intake. Uh, for example, the Institute of Medicine recommends um, for calcium 1,200 milligrams a day and vitamin D 600 to 800 IUs a day as the RDA um, for intake among postmenopausal women. And so supplementation is very reasonable to help meet these um, nutritional guidelines. For the low-fat diet modification trial, which included reduction in fat as well as an increase in fruits, vegetables, and grains, this dietary pattern did not significantly reduce the risk of breast cancer or colorectal cancer, the primary outcomes. However, with long-term follow-up, there was a significant reduction in breast cancer death. So this dietary pattern does provide an option for women who are at increased risk of um, breast cancer seeking to reduce these risks and would be very reasonable um, to recommend in, in that scenario. 
So overall, the WHI findings do not suggest a one-size-fits-all answer for these interventions. Um, they should not be universally recommended to all postmenopausal women. However, some women did benefit, and the findings um, underscore the importance of individualized and personalized health care together with shared decision-making with the patient. Thank you so much for your attention. This is Joanne Manson.